Hi there everyone and welcome to our webinar and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. My name is Hannah and with me today I have Neil Bundle from Squarebox Systems, Phil Story from Zen Data and Bryson Jones from North Shore Automation. And today we will be looking at how you can protect your assets and streamline your archiving operations with the new connector from North Shore Automation which is connecting Zen Data and CatDB. Just before we get started, I wanted to let you know that we'll be having a question and answer section at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions as we go through, you can type these into the questions box on your webinar control panel and we'll cover these off at the end. So Neil, over to you. Okay, thanks Hannah, and thanks to everyone here who's joined us either for the webinar live or who's gonna be listening back at a later time. This webinar is it's all about protecting your media assets and streamlining your archive operations with CatDV and Zen Data using our new integration tool from North Shore Automation. So, first of all, I'll run through the agenda. I'm going to start with a quick overview of CatDV for those who don't know the product and then some additional info for those who are already using it. I'll then hand over to Phil Story from Zen Data, who's going to explain uh, their comprehensive storage and archiving solution and following this we'll leave you in the very capable hands of our partner Bryson Jones who will explain the integration between CatDV and Zen Data using the new North Shore Automation Connector. We're really excited about this as a new tool in our CatDV kit bag. So CatDV, our guiding principles. We tend to show this slide quite a lot these days it's basically here to show the things that we're really good at as a company and indeed the things that we strive to be better at so there's honesty for you in fact if you look at our product releases over the past few years then we reckon every one of them ticks at least one or more of these boxes and if you look at the center we, we aspire to be the best production asset management tool on the planet um, and I think personally, we, we are going a very long way towards that because we really want to be able to help content creators to be able to efficiently collaborate and to produce high quality program output across kind of a multitude of platforms and market sectors. So look at the top in the green circle, simple and powerful. That's the motto. Kind of there are, there are many simple logging tools out there and a bunch of complicated and powerful ones. But it takes some skill, however, to combine these two principles into one product. And uh, I think this is what we've done. We, we aim to make simple things easy and complex things possible. So look at affordability. We, we like to think that we've got a cat TV solution to fit any budget. The entry level product is uh, sub a thousand dollars, whereas we can provide at the other end fully tailored solutions at the high end in excess of two to three hundred thousand dollars. Safe, okay. The the Cat DV safety and peace of mind element comes from the duration and existence of our product in the market. It's true to say we've been in existence for over 15 years now and, and indeed we've been formally recognized at the highest level as true pioneers in the industry. Squarebox Systems, the um, developer of CatDV, we're a strong privately owned UK company unencumbered by debt and therefore we're totally independent of the limitations that can be imposed by investors. And we've got over 1,200 large enterprise customers and many thousands of smaller companies. So that track record speaks for itself. And our resilient UK support network ensures customers aren't going to get locked into a limited solution that they're going to regret in future. So that's kind of going around the, the circle here. And if you move to the enterprise scale on, on this diagram, as I've hinted, CatDV is totally scalable from a small single user installation to a very large scale solution, forming part of a kind of a corporate IT infrastructure. So that's our five guiding principles. Then, if we look at this slide quickly, key capabilities. As it says, what we're trying to do here is to highlight the, uh, the capabilities in, during the life cycle of a file because that's what you're looking at here in this diagram. CatDV is really all about file-based workflow and we're here to help people with the whole content creation process from the initial shoot to the screen to securing that footage 
enabling it for search and reuse and finding so that it can be ultimately reused for any purpose really within an organization. So this could be anything from historic records to, to reuse in a series production or uh, saving time and money by avoiding reshooting the same stock footage time and time again. And believe you me, that happens. Okay. Now as you're no doubt aware, CatDV can be customized to suit your own workflow, but in the end what we're trying to show you here is the real functionality that underpins that product set. Next, okay. Next brings us to the Pegasus server. We wanted, I just wanted to, to drop this one into the, into the webinar, if you don't mind, guys and girls, because uh, this is our recently launched high-end server. In the CatDV product set, we've already had the workgroup server as this low-end solution for small teams up to eight people. This was followed by the enterprise server that has up until recently been the largest CatDV server and it's been serving some pretty big customers. I have to say we've got uh, some with millions of assets and several hundreds plus of connected clients. But we've also learned that there are some features that really help CatDV behave particularly well at even larger scales and this is where Pegasus Server comes in. So just uh, quickly, what are its headline features? It's built for scale. We've got super fast text textual searches that essentially index the metadata on its way into the system so that it makes finding stuff much quicker for these very fast text-based Google style searches. Then we've added audit information. So the Pegasus high-end server has now got detailed audit information and it can audit anything and everything that people do, such as uh, who looked for what, who changed what on the system. Specific questions answered are those such as when and where. It's designed for security requirements in, in excess of those served by our current enterprise solution. And uh, we've added a new reporting engine that can basically take this audit information to show trends and, uh, and a whole host of other features including system health. So just at the bottom there we've got this bit about professional services because in collaboration with our professional services team the Pegasus server is, is opening up a new set of opportunities uh, just to give you a few examples with custom access rules these can apply conditional access right down to clip level this means that you can apply uh, to, to, to kind of make certain assets available for particular sports team members that's the conditional access bit that's, that's, that's important. Or even members of a particular classroom learning facility because we've got some large educational facilities around the world using us now. Um, and you know, additional functionality is, is, is the big stuff like multi-site capability, built-in resilience and multiple server scaling for multi-site large enterprise installations. So, large-scale enterprise installations, of course, they, they need top quality storage and archiving solutions, which leads me very nicely to hand over to Phil Storey, the CEO of Zendata. Thank you. Um, what I want to do is just give an overview of Zendata's archive solutions. Um, all of which are aimed at video applications and the vast majority of our installations, over a thousand, are in a beta and entertainment or creative video. So um, a Zen data system will um, archive to LTO, to uh, optical disk archive from Sony. Uh, we also support Amazon Cloud and uh, we have customers that have uh, a very large disk in their system and they're uh, archiving to both disk and LTO or disk and um, optical or, or the web. Um, we support a very wide range of robotic libraries, uh, LTO libraries from Dell, HP, IBM, Oracle, Overland, Polestar, Quantum Spectra. Um, the ODA products come from Sony and, uh, and of course, Amazon Cloud. Um, all Zen Data Archives have a, a file folder interface and this means that any application that can write uh, to or read from a network share is compatible with a Zen data system. You can delete a file, 
um, you can uh, rename files and so on. Um, it's important to point out that restores are from the same um, path and file name as used to write the file. And I know a lot of CatDV users are, are used to um, using cache, and I'll make some comparisons throughout this uh, overview. But um, one of the differences in terms of uh, the file folder interface that we have is that when you write a file, you write it um, to a particular folder, um, it goes off to, say, LTO, and uh, then uh, it remains in the file system at that point. Your application just reads that file, which is quite different to the restore mechanism that was used with Cache, which was kind of fine for some years ago, but obviously the industry moves on. Um, all Zen data systems include a, a disk cache for performance enhancement. And this really makes a big difference in multi-threaded environments. So if you can imagine a robotic LTO library with a couple of uh, LTO drives, and maybe you've got three things going on at the same time. Maybe you've got archiving and you're restoring. Uh, from two different tapes. Uh, one of the nice things about having the disk cache there is that you can buffer up the archive operations, you can um, uh, make the restores, which always get priority, and then afterwards, when the drives become free, then um, the, um, the archived files will then be written to LTO. Um, so that's just one simple example, but it, in a multi-threaded environment, it really does make a huge difference. Um, in terms of the cache, then often systems got a relatively small cache for performance enhancements, but now we're offering um, cache up to 240 terabytes, which is great in terms of high performance restores. Um, it'll certainly saturate a uh, 10 uh, giggy network connection. You can restore in excess of uh, 100 terabytes a day. So you can get some amazing performance with uh, a large cache. In terms of uh, just speed, in terms of writing to LTO, LTO 7, each drive will run at um, 300 megabytes a second, which basically equates to uh, more or less uh, 25 terabytes a day can be written to a single LTO drive. And uh, so we have systems with uh, high performance configuration, which will certainly keep um, a couple of LTO 7 drives fed at the maximum rate, giving you more than 50 terabytes a day. So um, when you look at the application needs within Creative Video, then uh, I'm not aware actually of, of any applications that really need uh, throughputs greater than that. All of our servers run Windows Server 2012 R2. And we've got the file folder interface, which I spoke about. But in addition, we've got uh, an interface which uh, we call Workflow API, which provides media mover functionality. And this is what's used uh, by the North Shore Automation Connector. And uh, it basically gives a really tight integration between CatDV and um, the uh, Zendata archive. Um, and basically, we get an instruction which uh, says uh, pull a file from shared edit storage or push it back. And so that instruction, as Bryson will be uh, explaining later, basically means that you have really efficient data flows, that the, um, the content moves, the high-res content moves from shared edit storage to um, the Zen data system uh, without going through any other computer, without going through a client computer, for example. And um, it uh, is a very robust media mover, supporting standard SMB, um, network protocols, uh, FTP, uh, and also you can connect to SAN onto the uh, Zendata Archive server. Just a few other points to mention. Operation in the archive is fully automatic. You just set policies for automation. Um, uh, uh, 
functionality that's strongly used by uh, or often used by our customers is automated LTO cartridge replication and most people will just set this to produce one extra copy so once an LTO cartridge is um, full well actually the system will have automa uh, automatically created a second copy which can be kept in the library but ideally it would be exported from the library and kept in a uh, an off-site location for for really strong data protection the uh, disk retention policies on the system are completely automatic. You can uh, set rules like, I want to keep uh, all contents uh, on, uh, on the disk for a month after it was written or a month after it was last read. Um, again, completely automatic. And um, you can also set the system up to allocate files to different groups of LTO. So this uh, might be useful, for example, when uh, you've got uh, an organization that's using Cat TV, um, you have got different clients, and uh, maybe you set up a group of LTO cartridges for, say, Sony Pictures, another group for, uh, for Disney, and that's keeping that content on completely different LTO cartridges. Additional points to mention. Um, you can use a Zendata system. Because of that strong multi-threaded capability, you can use a Zendata system with multiple applications. So for example, you can um, connect it using North Shore Automation Connector to Cat TV. But in addition, you can have folder-based archiving, which can go off to a completely different group of LTO cartridges, for example. Um, we, of course, use LTFS, which um, avoids vendor lock-in. It's the uh, LTO format, which is used by multiple vendors. Uh, and we've really tightly integrated it, um, making a, a cache comparison. Then um, it really wasn't properly integrated with, with cache. And um, whereas uh, with our system, um, we're one of the three companies that actually wrote the code to produce LTFS, uh, uh, including um, IBM was one of those three. Um, we've got built-in migration to future LTO generations. Uh, a lot of people um, look at their archive and they don't want to keep the content for three years. They want to keep it for an indefinite amount of time. And of course, uh, technology moves on. So built into our system, we've got the ability in background to say move from LTO5 to LTO7. And um, the content will move from those older LTO5 cartridges to the new high performance, high capacity LTO7 cartridges. But as far as the um, uh, connector is concerned that will go to Cat TV or uh, the file folder interface is concerned, then nothing changes. The files are still in the same location. We've just updated everything, uh, updated the uh, barcode location, um, but it all happens completely in background without any need to have any extra uh, traffic on your network um, and it allows you to um, make that migration and uh, means that you can be looking uh, at buying a system today and you know that you can move on to LTO 8, LTO 9, LTO 10 over the coming years. Just a few final points, super easy to use, um, US support, um, on-site uh, for the hardware is available and uh, our systems are, as I mentioned earlier, proven in uh, creative video applications with over a thousand installations worldwide in a total of 50 countries. Very briefly, just to mention a few popular systems, our SXL8 consists of a 1U server, um, an LTO7 autoloader. Autoloader is basically the term for a robotic library that can only ever take one drive. And uh, the complete system is just under 16,000 uh, US dollars. Um, this is great for someone that wants to um, have some automation involved for handling a big set of uh, LTO cartridges which are going to be held offline on the shelf. Uh, it's, uh, it's so much better than having just a single standalone drive. In as much as you can load it up with uh, blank cartridges, uh, it'll take a total of seven and um, there's a, another um, mail slot for getting cartridges in and out. But 
uh, basically you can load it up with blank cartridges, set the system up to automatically replicate, it will update so the replica cartridge probably overnight would be the setting that you would use for that. Um, as soon as um, you're running out of uh, blank cartridges, the system will send out an email alert and uh, tell you that you need to take out some of the uh, full uh, cartridges and put in some new blank ones. So it greatly automates the uh, management of a very large library uh, of, uh, of content at uh, a reasonable price. We then jump up to a system which has got a 48 slot library, three mail slots, 45 active slots, which gives you a capacity of 270 terabytes. And again, at a reasonable price. And for a lot of people, this means that they really have, uh, it minimizes the amount of hands-on interaction that's needed with the system. If uh, that's not enough, we would then jump up to another system, which uh, we call the SXL 6500. This will go up to 1.8 petabytes, and uh, here we've got an example of uh, a system in terms of pricing, just under 60K for a system that's got one petabyte of uh, nearline LTO storage. That's the capacity of the library. And of course, with all of our systems, unlimited offline capacity. We introduced the NAB this year, a, um, a, a series of systems which have got a very large disk cache. It's available with 120, 180, 240 terabytes. And um, basically this allows you to, to reverse the storage hierarchy within your archive in as much as you can get away with a relatively small library. And uh, the big advantage of, of going with a, a large nearline disk is that you've got uh, amazingly fast restores. With that, I will hand over to Bryson. Thank you, Phil. Uh, and, and I want to say it's, uh, you know, we work with obviously Squarebox for a long time, but Zendata has been a really great company to work with. Uh, the people and their capabilities are top notch. And so uh, I have to say that that's a, it's been a really a great, a great system to involve ourselves with. And of course, long history with Squarebox and the, and the CatDB product as well. So I'm um, going to just move through quickly here. Uh, you know, who is North Shore for those of you who don't know? Uh, we're a US-based CatDB-centric professional services organization. Uh, we also do development and we have uh, a set of distribution software and solutions. Uh, actually, this has become a key part of our operations and we're already leveraging the features of that Pegasus server that Neil mentioned. To, we've rolled out uh, some large scale media distribution systems for clients here in the US. So Pegasus server is not something that um, is being you know discussed or, or vaporware. It's out and being used in production and it's been a really great product for us. Of course, we make the Acomi distribution system, which works with CatDV. And then we're here today to talk about automation and middleware, uh, software and solutions. There's um, a, a big thing that we really believe in is this idea that, that we now this far into the damn business, and CatDV has such a, an established client base, if you're still clicking and dragging to get things done, uh, we really want to you know, move you away from that and into automating those simpler and repeatable tasks. Archive is a great place to start with automation if you don't have a lot right now. Uh, in the, in the overview of the, the Zendata connector, uh, you know, we want to kind of call out a few things. One, works in CatDV or web client, so multiple people can use the system. Uh, you can do policy-based archives, so you can have things automatically go to archive. Assets come in through a worker node or through CatDV ingest and automatically get sent to Zendata without anyone telling the system to do that. Uh, we utilize, Phil mentioned the workflow API, which we'll get into in a little later, but in CatDV we use the REST API, which is really fast, really robust, and that's been something that over the last couple of years has really, they've done a lot of work on. It's, it's, it's pretty great. So we have uh, you know, some of the fastest middleware connectors thanks to that API. And then, as was mentioned by all the companies, uh, US-based support. In US hours now, you can get support from all three companies, which is a big deal. And these solutions are based on real-world experience and workflows. As, as Phil said, Zendata has a lot of systems out there. Uh, North Shore's been out you know, now for years and years, and of course, CatDB has been around. So this is all based on on real-world client use, and actually, this this plugin has been very successful. So it came out around NAB this year, and we have quite a few customers here in the states that have it. Um, I'm going to dive in, kind of, to the simple part first, sort of the user interface, and 
One of the key things is you can access all of the archive, restore, and deletion functions right from the CatDB Pro or web client interface. So you don't need to be interacting with multiple systems. And like I said, this all, all is viewable in your CatDB, turning CatDB really into a dashboard for your automation and archiving uh, systems. Archived assets with Zendata, one of the big things that was really great uh, when we started working on this product was, was getting to see how file groups worked. Phil mentioned them, and so our plugin allows you to send to these different file groups right from CatDB. So you can select a file group and that allows you to apply those policies he was talking about. How long does it stay on the cache? Uh, which group of tapes does it go to? You know, for, for client separation of data. And then also this automatic replication, and that's really, really powerful. If you think about it, because of their cache, they can actually replicate using a single drive. As he was mentioning, overnight you can make a second copy of LTO. And that's something that's somewhat unusual in the archive business. So, uh, you know, North Shore, uh, our initials are NSA, and we like to think that we're just as paranoid. We really, really want to focus on security and that's a great way to do that. Uh, going back to talking about that dashboard situation, all of the asset metadata and the archive metadata, your status, cartridge IDs, everything is displayed in the CatDB interface. So if you want to protect your archiving system from your users, so to speak, if you have a less savvy user who needs to archive something or restore it, they can do that and they get all of the information and the logging and, and any sort of updates or error notifications right in the interface. So you can really use CatDB to track your automation and that's been a big part of what we've done. It's great to be able to search and find, which is of course the principal idea, but also be able to get all this metadata right there in the view and then let CatDB be the front end for your entire operation. That's really a focus that, that we, we try to build our products around. And to that, one of the things that's interesting is obviously if you have one of these smaller libraries and you want to restore, you're going to need to know what tapes are involved. And, and as Phil was mentioning, Zendata sort of abstracts that from you. Um, you know, they just take care of everything. But when you go to restore, you're going to want to know what barcodes are in there. Now, Zendata will tell you uh, if you call something that's not online, but it's way better to have it available. So for here, you can in CatDV, either a details panel, or we like to use a list view, you can see a list of all those tapes and load them. So it really helps people with smaller systems to actually manage their restores more smoothly if you're really going to go back further in it. I do want to mention here, uh, not having anything to do with selling archive systems or hardware, that when you're talking about automation, there is a good case to be made for, for actually trying to purchase a larger library because the larger that library, the less you're going to touch it. So we have a lot of clients that go to great lengths to automate their processes, but if, if you're not automating with a large storage system, you're really going to have to touch that system more often. So, you know, sometimes when your salesperson is talking to you about a larger library, they may not just be trying to get a larger sale. They may also be thinking about the fact of if your boss has given you a mandate or you've given a mandate that says, I really only want to touch this thing once a year, that's when you would probably look for a larger library system because then you can just sort of, you know, right away, like, that, you know, that one petabyte system or a 270 terabyte system, you're not going to be swapping tapes very often. And that's going to be a more automatable solution for your users. And then moving into sort of data flows that were mentioned, one of the big things we want to make clear is that CatDB does a really good job of managing Mac and PC paths really well uh, between Windows and OS X. Zendata also works with whether you're using Windows or Mac clients, uh, supporting SIFs, SFB, SAN mounts, all sorts of storage mounts. But then North Shore manages those file path conversions right in the plugin. So North Shore is going to take care of that and remove that complexity. You set it up in the beginning and pretty much forget it. Once you set up your storage, you don't have to worry. And those of you who've automated cross-platform automations, you know what a trouble that can be. We really try to take that sort of out of, uh, out of your list of duties to manage. I'm going to move a little bit more now into how the systems are configured and how the data flows in them. And this is just a generic overview of the application interactions. And so CatDB Pro Client, of course, flags something to happen, writes it to the server, and the worker node says, oh, so you want to do that, notifies that to CatDV. What's great about that is that means that really because you're not using the client, uh, even an automation could actually tell something to, so you could set policies that say, okay, if something's import date is over a week old, I want to go ahead and move that into the Zendata system, things like that. Also notice that we're using the REST API to talk directly to the CatDV server. We're not talking back through the worker node and the workflow API with Zendata. 
notice that no data is being moved by any of the other systems. Zendata owns the media move, and that's really important. Uh, we believe that the archive company, you know, they, they're focused on moving meta data and securing it, and so we really want to give them that responsibility and simply monitor it and, and notify CatDB of what's happening. So this is sort of a high level view. If we want to actually look at uh, some actual system topologies, and again, this is just one example. There are, because of the flexibility of CatDB, there are hundreds of possibilities. You know, CatDB works on Windows and Linux and, uh, you know, OS 10. So you can have a lot of different types of systems. And, and specifically, here's one where we have both Mac and PC clients. We have a Mac server and a Zendata uh, system with the archive device. Note that the Zendata, server itself runs the North Shore code and the worker node, so we typically would like to have that here. This drawing has, a, has another worker node in it. We know that most people have more than one, uh, but this worker node's not involved in the operation. So you've got simplicity, everything loaded right on this in data server, really tight integration, and then we're using that REST API to talk back to the CatDB server. So. Uh, you know, again, uh, there's all sorts of different ways. This is a 10 gig infrastructure. Uh, you can use fiber mounts. Uh, Zendata is very flexible in that way. What we really wanted to show is requirements for the system. Uh, you're going to want to have a web client, obviously, for REST API access for CatDB. And you're going to want to have a worker node. But you can talk to your CatDB reseller, and Zendata can help manage this for you. Uh, Squarebox has released a limited use worker node, which is really great, a less expensive license. And so if you need to add a worker node, you can do that relatively inexpensively uh, you know, through this partnership. It's really great. Um, with that, I kind of want to talk a little bit, really the, take the lion's share of my discussion uh, about data flow and automation. And specifically, we want to talk a difference about caching systems um, it, you know, and how they work. A lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about uh, caching, cache-based archive systems, and we want to talk about that. And I want to make clear that we're going to talk a little bit about cache A today. And uh, we're not you know, picking on that specifically, but it is different, and it's a great example of the difference between Zendata and other cache systems, you know, maybe, maybe better or worse, but just different. Uh, centrally, if you're talking about archiving uh, in a, in a cache-based archive system, rather than going straight from storage to tape, you're actually writing technically to a cache. Now, in a modern systems, these caches are so fast that typically what's really happening is that's passing straight through. And Phil can speak to that more. The Zendata team can talk to you a little bit more about that. But structurally, this is the idea simplified. But on a restore, there's an interesting thing. If you're familiar with, for instance, the cache A or some of the other systems, when you call a restore, you're actually calling back to tape to the cache, and then either the system or the user is moving back to the storage system, uh, your actual storage location. Cache A flips that a bit, and on restore, Cache A is actually using the media mover to push straight out of the system back to storage. So the cache is there if you need it, if you want to access it again, if you're using it as like a nearline storage system, as was described, but this is what's happening. So the important thing is you're not having to move that media back. That media mover is part of that work workflow API is actually handling all that for you. Again, full automation. That's a really big deal. Um, Recently, we had some discussions on the Creative Cal, for those of you who are on the Cal, talking about the differences in the way the CatDB plugins worked. And, uh, and I was involved early on in introducing Cache and Squarebox to talk to each other. So I have a little bit of, of understanding of how the systems work. So we want to really talk about a workflow standpoint here and show uh, sort of how archiving with CatDB started and then what it evolved to over, over time. So in the original archive plugin, which now uh, is, the caches are going to be served by the generic Squarebox archive plugin, you're using the CatDB Pro client to move the data. So a lot of people, this is confusing as people move into automation. So this is running on a workstation, and a user selects the assets in CatDB and says, oh, I want to archive this. CatDB Pro itself, using this plugin, is actually moving the data, this black arrow, into the cache, VTape, and onto cache. So if you think about that, uh, it's got some interesting uh, sort of ramifications. If you have a one gig connection to either of these devices, uh, not only are you tying up a workstation, but you're doing that at a relatively uh, slow speed you know, in, in modern networking terms. Also, if you're going to do this across multiple people, you're going to need this plug-in on multiple CatDB systems, and then you're going to need high-speed connections for all those systems. Now, 
if, if people are upgrading or cross-grading, Zendata will actually work with that same plugin and that same methodology. And that's one of the great things about Squarebox and, and actually Zendata is that they actually give you a lot of ways to work with the system. Now, as a, as a, as a dam professional, for me sometimes I, I say that that's too permissive. We'd like to move people into different architectures, but know that you're, you know, there's no one abandoning that and this, this archive plugin will still work. And if, you know, that you can talk to Squarebox and Zendata about directly. Uh, moving up to sort of the next level of automation, and this is sort of the evolution of Zendata and CatDV working together. Uh, there was a plugin and some different workflows that were built even manually using the worker node to move assets from the storage into the Zendata cache. And then you could buy an archive plugin that would actually connect them and give you tape information and things like that. But if you notice, this is actually an outside system, the worker node, transferring to Zendata. This is not using the uh, workflow API from Zendata. So for us, this was a, a great step forward, but, but it, it really didn't, when North Shore looked at the at the problem of archiving, uh, you know, and connecting these two systems, we decided to do a, a bit more advanced uh, and, and modern approach to that. One, we immediately, uh, as always, work with the CatDV's REST API. And to give you an idea, for those of you who've used a worker node for shell scripting and things like that, a worker node awesome and powerful system, but you're talking about an update of, you know, somewhere in, you know, half second to two seconds, depending on the system it's running on. 64-bit helped a ton, but it, it really can't compete with the REST API where you're seeing 20 to sometimes a hundred, over 100 transactions per second. So when you're really talking about a high bandwidth system, you really need to get and use that REST API for all of your automations. Uh, and it's been awesome working with Squarebox, I have to say, their, their support on that uh, and, and developers are, are, are top notch. So when we built our plugin, we already obviously had a long history of using the REST API and we were exposed immediately to the workflow API from Zendata. And if you notice, that allows Zendata to handle all of the media moves to and from the storage. So everything is handled by the most capable part of the workflow, which of course, that's their business. Archive and media moving is all Zendata does for a living. That's their focus. And so we're able to give that to sort of the best of class. I, I love that Dave Clack from Squarebox always talks about, uh, you know, choosing the right tool and offering best of class solutions. And we really feel that in this workflow, Zendata was most capable to handle it. Zendata is constantly updating us. We are querying them for status and we're writing that to CatDV. So as things run, you see a percentage of completion. So you have a complete, you know, a complete dashboard approach where you don't leave CatDV. And notice that your CatDV clients are not actually performing the operation. They're simply saying, do this, and then all of the automation tools are doing it, which also simplifies your network. These can be web clients. They don't need a 10 gig connection to your client to be fast. You can put your Zendata and your storage on a very fast connection and get all of that efficiency. So, so that's you know, sort of the block diagram of how this thing is put together. And, uh, and again, that follows a, those of you familiar with our products, such as the Vantage uh, connector and other connectors, you know that this is typically how we work. Um, we did want to address, for, speaking again about those creative cow questions, some people had questions about migrating. Uh, specifically, they wanted to talk about migrating from another archiving system. So we've laid out how that works. And also for me, uh, you know, we named our company North Shore Automation for a reason, and we really want people to not see the dam as a, as a chore. We don't want to see archive and asset management as an additional job. And if you're only using it in a manual way, as a lot of you know, you're adding time to your workflow. There's a benefit once you have everything in the dam and once you start to automate, you get back that time. And not only do you get back that time, but you get far more time back. And so for us, we really see that, that it's wonderful to get started with a very simple and small CatDV system. But as you grow and engage more with North Shore and Squarebox to automate your workflows, you're going to find that the benefits really start to show through. And this, the differences in these plugins actually show a very clear difference in that. So, so I want to kind of talk you through uh, this. Um, so speaking to these, uh, these plugins, excuse me a second, let me step through. There we go. So I've divided this by color so you can sort of see the parts that uh, may require a little bit of assistance over here on the left versus full automation over on the right. 
So if we're talking through this workflow, the first thing you're going to do, let's say you have your 200 tapes or whatever. We have a, a client right now that is migrating an archive that's uh, over a petabyte. But if you have, uh, no matter how many tapes you have, uh, you're going to put those tapes in your system and you're going to restore them via the plugin. I mentioned this relink step because uh, if you have storage that allows you, talking about that permissiveness, maybe you have storage that allows you to delete a volume or, or, or change the name of a volume. If you do that, you may find that your volume no longer exists. So when you do a restore, you'll be handling a relink operation. So, so those first two parts in this action may or may not be fully automated. But once that asset is relinked in CatDB and back on the storage, you can have a policy in the worker node in this example, you could watch for some assets that have cache metadata. Maybe they have a tape ID or, or they have a cache status that's not blank. And then when they come online, the worker node is aware of that online status. And it immediately will send those relinked assets to Zendata through our plugin for archive. Zendata will completely manage that archive. The data move, again, no client involved in any of this operation, securely puts it on your archive device of choice. Obviously, a lot of options there. And finally, giving you the archive recorded in CatDV Pro in new metadata fields, I might add. So you can retain your old archiving. One of the great things about CatDV is you have your old archive fields. And because our plugin is using new specific fields to send data, you actually can have uh, archive. You can leave your old LTO4 or 5 tape online and actually know that you have a second copy there safe in Zendata. The beauty of it is, is and, and I really want to pitch that something that uh, Phil mentioned in passing, he mentioned that migration that you could migrate inside Zendata say from LTO 6 to 7 or LTO 5 to 6. Being able to do that is a really huge thing. We're all now seeing with our clients that people that chose a non-automatable non -automatable archive system actually now they have a huge chore moving those LTO4s, those LTO5s up to seven. And we're really trying to rid you of this whole blue side so that we can't help you with the old stuff, but all this new stuff, we can make sure that you never have to do a manual operation again. And that's a really big deal. I think that this year, Year, next year or two is really going to make that critical to people as they start to look at the price of not automating their workflows. And so, sort of wrapping up, you know, a, we really hope that you'll reach out. If you have any questions about migrations or, or any advanced workflows, please, of course, reach out to Squarebox, reach out to North Shore Automation. Your CatDB reseller is the source for all that contact. Uh, Zendata has worked really closely with both of us. So no matter your region, you can get to a sales engineer. I have to put a pitch in for the Zendata sales engineers have been awesome. And uh, they assisted a lot with actually this presentation. And, and uh, it's been really great working with them and, of course, Squarebox over the years. And I can't, again, can't say enough about energizing your automations and also giving Pegasus Server a real long look uh, for really growing this CatDV server that so many of you have out there, turning it into something that can really, really be a huge part of your media workflows. So uh, thank you. I'm going to turn that back uh, now to Hannah for questions. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Bryson. Um, and as Bryson said, we're now going to go through some of your questions that you've been sending in. If you have any more as we start going through these ones, please feel free to send them in by typing them into your webinar control panel box, and we'll cover those ones off as well. So um, our first question is both Neil and Bryson, you've been mentioning the Pegasus server. So how would somebody go about finding out more about that? Basically, um, you'd like to, for the uh, for Europe and uh, the UK uh, side of things, if you contact us directly at sales at squarebox.com, we can give you all the information you need and talk it through with you, including online demos, etc. Absolutely. And, and in the US, uh, your US reseller, um, I should mention that, yeah, th that that involves, most of those involve Squarebox for engineering and such. Uh, we do have experience with it. So as far as laying out the basic features, and we can also talk about uh, our deployments in the US. So definitely, it, it tends to be, um, it's a more traditional, you know, big enterprise dam deployment. Uh, that's a, but the, I got to say that, from being around the product for so many years now, this is my ninth year watching Squarebox, so many of things that were on, probably whoever even posed this question, so many questions that were on the wish list for so long um, 
you are on there. And I want to say that it's really been great to see Squarebox for the last couple of years answer the challenge of these enterprise dams. Uh, still the focus on production dam, obviously, and best of class there. None of that feature, none of those features go away. But a lot of the things that probably your, your IT department, as I like to say, beat you up over, uh, Squarebox has now implemented them. So all that auditing, the error reporting, and then there's also some really things as far as performance and database structure that, uh, you know, that uh, I got to say that it's probably the biggest change in a dam product that I've seen in the industry as far as taking the product from two or three years ago till today. Pegasus has really, really changed the nature, the very nature of what CatDV is. Yeah, there's a lot of new engineering under the hood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, yeah, the developers would probably say that's the understatement of the year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super. And then the next question is about migration. So somebody's asking um, about migrating to LTO7 with a cloud mirror. Is that possible using the setup we've been talking about? Absolutely. There's, there's actually a few ways. Uh, Phil, uh, you have uh, AWS integrated into your product as well, right? You want to speak a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Um, the, the approach that we've taken actually is Amazon specific and we use a, a particular uh, Amazon gateway to be able to do that um, and it really is uh, 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 the uh, uh, Amazon cloud storage really looks like um, uh, storing content on um, on archival cartridges and you can use the uh, system to kind of um, have cartridges on uh, S3 type access and also Glacier type access. But one of the things that we're working on that we think is key, which we don't have today, um, is the ability to have both in-house and cloud. And uh, so in a future release, you will be able to uh, basically set up a destination on CatDV working through uh, the NSA connector and you'll be able to say um, just cloud or just uh, in-house LTO, let's say, um, or both. And um, at the moment, it's that both that we don't do. Um, you can yeah. set up a destination which is in-house and cloud, but not simultaneously both. Um, yeah. So that's coming along. Yeah, and, and and I'll speak to uh, if you choose to do that uh, that through your dam, uh, Squarebox. Uh, and North Shore offer AWS connectors uh, as well as a lot of other object storage systems. So when people say cloud, a lot of times you immediately think, you know, Amazon, uh, you know, obviously that's, you know, they're the, they're the giant. So we, we've actually seen people not only do cloud, but also on premise. And so there's a, uh, a huge thing where, uh, you know, sort of private cloud where you put your own object storage in a data center and that's then that's also very possible. So if you reach out if you're trying to do that, you can obviously speak to Zendata about their solution, but also know that Squarebox and North Shore also engineer those solutions. And uh, and that's actually something that's very common. It's become a really big deal. It's not a matter in the old days it was either or. Today it's both. And that's uh, like I said, that's probably the most common thing we see. Great. And then a follow-up question um, from the same person was, is LTFS the only supported um, port? Oh, from, from a, so really it's a Zen data question. Um, we um, support both um, TAR and uh, LTFS. Um, but, uh, and I, I, I do like TAR from a simplicity perspective. Um, the um, the issue, though, with TAR is that um, uh, it's a standard that's been around since 1980, and uh, which is great. But if you want to make it look like disk access, which is clearly what what we do, um, then uh, you have to add a, um, a catalog or an index for every single uh, cartridge. So the problem is there is no standardization of that index. And uh, so that then means that you can't take, let's say, a cache tar and put it into a Zen data system because um, we don't read the proprietary um, cache index and vice versa. So that is like generally true with the tar format. Um, and that's why LTFS is uh, such a good thing because it includes within the formats uh, standards, uh, then it includes an index, which is a standardized index, which allows you to take uh, content from one supplier and move it to another supplier. 
Um, so yeah, we do support TAR as well. As far as uh, Sony optical disc archives are concerned, there is only one way to write to it, and it's uh, using a uh, Sony approved uh, format, which uh, which we of course adhere to. So that then means that you can move Sony cartridges from one system to another um, without any problem. But uh, but no, uh, we do support TAR, but. Uh, uh, LTFS is the way to go for uh, cartridge interchange uh, between different manufacturers. And, and Phil, I just want to say to you that I hadn't even thought of the Sony element, and that's something I really found uh, just you know just to compliment you guys a little bit that you know you always seem engineering wise to, to be thinking about the other problem you know LTFS versus TAR but you know you throw in the fact that oh there are these other solutions that may or may not be proprietary as well so it's actually really cool to see that you guys sort of go a little bit beyond on that Thanks. yeah thanks uh, the the other thing that we do when coming back to that uh, moving to other generations then um, you can move from LTO to, you can migrate to Sony uh, Optical or vice versa. So you can migrate from one standard to another um, within the Zen Data system. Um, and again, it doesn't affect the, the path or the workflow API location. So um, that does, uh, as soon as you've got that um, capability, well, um, I on a Zendata system with that capability, then you have all sorts of options in terms of where you might go in the future. Wonderful. So um, last question, which is kind of a grouping of lots of different people's questions, is where would somebody go about finding uh, a more specific costing for either the plugin or Zendata um, and uh, how that would fit into their workflow? Phil, I'll, I'll let you take that because that's really your, I mean, you know, that, that's one thing that is clear is that this is actually, uh, though it's a partnership, it's actually part of the Zendata product line. So, Phil, you want to uh, handle that? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, so um, uh, through Zendata channels, um, then uh, we can supply not only the Zendata system, but the um, the North Shore connector. And uh, so the, our distributor here in uh, the USA and Canada for this product range is JB. Um, that means that there are a huge number of uh, CAT, DV, CAT DV resellers across the, uh, the two countries. Um, but um, what, so you can simply contact your um, your reseller and they'll be able to provide that information. Alternatively, you can always contact us and we'd be delighted to provide pricing information. Excellent, thank you, Phil. Um, so I think that's all of your questions for now. If you have any more that we haven't covered um, or you think of some more later, please feel free to send them in to sales at squarebox.com and we can answer them or forward them on to the right people. And just to let you know, we've got a few more webinars coming up over the next months, which you can sign up for on our website. And yesterday we also did our IBC highlights webinar, which includes a little bit more information about the Pegasus server. Um, so you can watch that back on our website. Um, oh, and that's also showing some information on our CAPDB12 beta program if you're interested in that. And that's all from us today, but I would just like to say thank you to Bryson, Phil and Neil for talking to us about this new connector. And of course, thank you to you all for listening. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.